Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Well, today I wanted to talk a bit about getting that fat analog sound. I'm sure you're probably like me and um, many other folks that are into uh, home recording. And you're always searching for that fat sound and certainly that warmness uh, to your music. You don't want it to be antiseptic and cold and digital. You want it to have that warmness. And um, there are a number of tools, um, plugins and stuff. You can get them inherent within Studio One. And then there's also some third-party plugins you can find that can help you do that. So I started in my research, um, you know, I've got like, you've got the tape um, emulation plugins from um, Slate. And uh, there's a bunch of other things you can look at. I think um, Tone Boosters has one that's a little bit less expensive. So I was starting to I was starting to look into that, and I discovered these console emulation plugins. And there's a number of them on the market, some expensive, and some less expensive. Uh, Slate has one that emulates it's VCC. It emulates like four different consoles, and uh, there's a couple of others. And I, I stumbled upon this company called Sonimus. S O N I M U S. It's Sonimus.com if you want to check it out. And they actually have two products. They're both $39, which is, you know, pretty cheap for a plugin. One is called the Britson, and that emulates a Neve 8014 console. And then the other product they have is called the Satson. And the Satson, I'm not sure which console that emulates. I think it's an SSL console. I'm not quite sure, but... Um, I decided to try one of these out, and I went with the the, uh, the newer one, the Britson, which is the Neve emulation, in a search to get that, you know, that fat, warm Neve sound. And started to look into it, and it looks to me like what they do is um, they use, like, they model, like, crosstalk and harmonic distortion, mild harmonic distortion, to basically mimic the analog circuitry. Which is kind of cool, right? And I know that um, and I looked at VCC, the Slate product that looked pretty extensive. But honestly, you know, I didn't want to get, I don't have an iLock too, and I, I didn't want to go for all that. I just wanted to try this out and see if it really made a difference. And for $39, I tried the, the, the Sonomous plugin. So I wanted to show you that today because I've done a little experiment, an A-B experiment, so that you could listen to it and let your ears hear the difference so i recommend putting your uh putting this video in 1080p so you get the best possible sound put a good set of headphones on or play it on your studio monitors don't play this on crappy pc monitors you won't hear the difference play it on something you know play it on some 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 decent um equipment so let's go over the plugin there's really two pieces to it there's a channel plugin and then there's a bus, bus plugin. So let me show you the channel plugin first. So here it is here. Um, looks like a Neve console. It's got a slider, a VU meter. And what's kind of cool about this is it has a high pass and a low pass. So you could use this on every, well, you're supposed to put this on every channel. And uh, this allows you, you know, if you have, you have this high pass, low pass, you can use this function of this plugin right to do that on, on, on your channels, which is kind of cool. It's got really two modes. It's got a standard um, gain mode, which basically, if you if you play this, let me solo this here. This is on the room, so let me solo this. If I play this for you, as I increase this, you'll hear the gain go up. Okay, so that's. The standard that's a standard gain function but if you click on the name of the thing here and you and you use output comp compensation what this does is this actually dials in saturation the neve 8 you know 8014 console saturation into the channel okay and you can basically choose as much of this as you like so let's let me just show you how this works i'm going to start at the bottom here You can see it peaking there so 
you know, remember, analog peaking is different than digital peaking, right? You don't get distortion when this, well, peaking is peaking, but you don't get distortion when this VU heater is hitting plus three. You need to watch out for this 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 peak light. You certainly don't want that to come on, so you need to find a place where that's them not coming on. If I go above here, you can hear it start to distort. Okay, so keep it right about there. And you can hear the difference. It's bringing in some of, it's bringing in something, some sort of warmness or, you know, something to change the, the, the tone of the, of the channel. And then you've got your high pass, low pass here. Let me just show you how that works. I'll go to a guitar here. Um, let's go to this guitar here. So it's got a, it's it works pretty well. It's a nice uh, analog, so-called analog feel um, pass filters. Okay. So to get what I've discovered here, and again, I'm I've been just using this for a couple of days. What I've discovered is that to get the sound of the board, the the, the analog console, you need to have the channels in output compensation mode, and what you need to do is go through each of the channels and dial in the amount of saturation you want for each individual instrument, okay? And then once you do that, you need to put the bus plug-in on all of your buses. So I've got that on every bus in the mix. Um, that's how I'm doing it. That's what it said in the manual. I'm not sure if you could just put it on the master bus. Maybe that'll work. But it said to put the, bu put the bus um, um, plug-in on every bus, which is what I did. Also, I forgot to mention, it has this fat, um, button here. Okay. And what that actually does is that'll dial in more of the, um, the saturation. So let me go back to the, to the room here. So I'll bring this up here. Could hear it starting to distort right so so this just brings in more of it so i've basically kept it off um oh, this other th other button here is allows you to multiply the uh, accu the accuracy of the fader so uh it gives you more um more throw on the fader if you will so that's another feature that it has here and if you look at the it's, it allows you to change where the view meter is, whether it's post or pre, same with the filters, and also allows you to do mono processing. You can check their manual out to understand how this all, all the stuff works. Um, but it's pretty cool. So then I've like again, again, I've got the the bus um, on all of the channels, all the bus channels. And they, the bus has three different um, settings. It's got uh, flat master loud and master bright and i'm trying to remember yeah I ba I basically when i did my demonstration i kept it on flat okay uh but the bright you can see when when you listen to it the brights the bright actually brings out more of the highs um um so that's you know that, that's a if you want that in your mix you can certainly do that so uh, but i kept it on flat for the purposes of my demonstration um what i did was i took a section of this song okay and I mixed it down to a wave. I basically put L2 on I, I, I did like a pre-mix on it, fairly quick mix on it. I put L2 on it to bring the volume up, okay? And I mixed two versions. I mixed one without the, the Britson bus, the Britson plugin, and one with the Britson plugin. And what I'm going to do here in a moment is I'm going to switch to another uh, Studio One session where I've got that set up so you can A-B it, okay? I want to let, let you, you guys listen to it to see what you think, um, and then I'll give you my opinion on it. Again, you know, listening to in, in the studio in a live environment is going to be a little different than listening to it on YouTube, even though it's 1080p. You're not going to get all the nuances of it. So um, that's basically the plugin. It's real simple to use. Um, but let me switch. So let me switch over now to the, the test, and I'll, I'll let you give you a listen to, uh, to what it sounds like. 
All right, so this is the, the test I set up. Um, the track in green is has the Britson plug-in on it, the uh, 8014 emulation on it. And the track in yellow is basically Sonomous Britson plugins are turned off. Okay. And I've got a, a Blue Cat a frequency analyst here so you could see um, where it sits on the meter. And what I'll do here is you could see it's going to AB it as you play as I play through it here. So I'm going to sit back. I'm not going to say anything. I just want you guys can listen to it. You can close your eyes, do whatever you'd like so you can, you know, listen to the differences. Here we go. Okay, well, hopefully that was a good test for you. I can tell you, when I listen to this, I can distinctly hear difference. It's subtle, but I can hear difference. Especially when I really picked it up was right around this 50 mark right here. When the lead, when the solo comes in, and when it's in the solo, you can... To me, when you A, B it from, from off to on, the off... The, the 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 rhythm guitars are kind of like buried and especially the picking guitar the guitar that's going through the picking the chord but when you turn it on you can really start to hear some brightness in that guitar part and even the bass comes alive it just seems to me that using this plugin kind of glues it all together this is my ears okay um it's very subtle it's not it's not going to be a huge you know, a huge eureka change. It's, it is very subtle, but I think I, I, I think it sounds much better when you're using uh, this plugin. And the thing is, it's 39 bucks, so it's almost worth it to try it out and check it out. I mean, you know, I think it's actually a pretty cool product, and, you know, this is kind of a blues song here, and for this type of song, it really, war it, to me, it really warmed it up, so... Um, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about it, you know, um, I think they have a um, forum on their website. You might want to check that out. There's some good information on their website. Uh, but I thought, you know, since I invested the money to try it, I might as well put this out there so you guys could see what I found. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. You know, I'm all about trying to help others, you know, learn more about, uh, recording as I, you know, go through my quest to try to, uh, to, to get better at doing it. So hopefully this little piece of information uh, has been helpful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.